Hello everyone, I hope you all are doing well and welcome to another fan to play fantasy match preview. This is for the first test between Pakistan and New Zealand and it's going to be played at Pindi where hopefully mm-hmm. like Karachi not at Pindi okay yeah, right sorry I was yeah. I was discussing with him how the condi- before we start this video how the conditions at Pindi were not conducive at all and mm-hmm. what I what the point I was coming to is hopefully it's not like the Pindi test mm-hmm. and it's like yeah. the second Karachi test so yep. expecting good conditions where it generally is better to bat first and then it goes on to help spin so yep. we have Nikhil Bhai with us today and he'll start by giving you insights into the venue conditions itself Bilkul, so I think rightly covered there. Uh, should be better to bat first. Average score 350 should be very good to start start you up with. And then as the game goes on, you will see you you should expectedly see more spin come in because I think that's where Pakistan have been playing on. But there has been a change in the leadership uh, for Pakistan. You have a certain trade, Lala, to take the calls. So let's see what the 11 is for them, and that will tell you how they are approaching. And it will also tell you how they're thinking about the wicket. So, uh, that could be very interesting to see for this uh, very particular game. Which is why I think for the game type, it will still be SLN mini GLs. Because test match has enough options for you to try out in both regards. Uh, in terms of your core players will say the same, but there are enough options to try. But because as of now, we have no clue what Lala will take a call on. So, I have kept it high. Uh, because, you know... It, ha- it is to do with the how they read the pitch. Uh, both mm-hmm. the teams, that is. So, uh, that is the only reason for keeping the risk level high. Of course, post toss it becomes medium because you know the players. But as of now, I feel it's a bit high. But you can still play mini gels more if you want to as compared to small league. Yes, we have, we have a squad of 19 to pick mm-hmm. our players from with the four players uh, added onto the squad. So, it will be yeah. interesting to see who are the ones who finally make it in. But for now, we have basically assumed based on the last playing 11 mm-hmm. how we are going to probably round up our team. So, first yeah. up, let's look at what our base team is for this one. So, yes, we are on the fan to play app and we are ready to set our base team for the Pakistan-New Zealand game. But because you are watching this video on Christmas Day, ensure that you take part in the Christmas leaderboard. You can go check your rankings on the app itself. And the, there are prizes up to the 50th rank with the first prize being a trip to, the, to Australia for the BBL game. So, ensure that you don't miss out and make your best deposit right now and use the code SANTA because you'll also get 100% bonus on your deposit. And now let's look at what is the base team that we have set up for you. So first up in the keeping section, we have gone with Sarfraz Ahmed, expected to make his comeback in these few test matches. Uh, in these few test matches, Nikhil Bhai, uh, both Rizwan Sarfraz to play or we are just looking at either one and it would be... A swap slot in case one does not yeah. play. I think it should be a straight shot unless the year wants to end crazily. Uh, almost did for Bangladesh, but uh, Shreya saved it for in that in that regard. So, I think uh, it, it will be one of them. If Sarfraz gets a game, I think very good a differential for you to try. Because this one hasn't quite had the run of success that he's had in other formats. So, I think uh, it might be given a try. Tom Blundell, if you feel very good defensive player uh, comes low down the order if you feel he'll add value from there you can definitely go ahead and take him but i think the common pick will definitely be whoever plays between this one and surprise yes so that's it from the keeping section in the batting we have gone with four batters but yes these are <laughs> this is pakistan condition so we had to do that so we have yeah. gone with babar saud kane and devin conway we have quite a few other choices too to discuss, but we'll get to them in the Grand League section and as many of them will be slightly conditioned base picks rather than going for all of them blindly. And in the all-rounders, we have gone with Michael Bracewell. Nikhil, any thoughts on any other all-rounder that you'd like to pick? So, again, even in the all-rounder session, if you see, they did not quite use Fai Mashal of much and now he's out of the squad. Uh, mm-hmm. Aga Salman, I felt it was terribly underused, I think, with the ball and batted very low with the bat, which again, so this is why I said the risk level is high because you need to be very sure of how the players are going to be used. So, from this section, I think Bracewell is a proper 2022 pick 
uh, with the kind of uh, run of form that he's had. But otherwise, if you are confident on any of Aga Salman or your Darren Mitchell, if he plays and then being used well, you can definitely go ahead with any of them. Because as of now, they haven't given seen enough of that. I think Bracewell is a safest and sound pick from this section. Right, absolutely. And so we have gone with him. And in the bowling, we have gone with Abrar Ahmed, Norman Ali, Zaid Mahmood. So packing the spin. Tim Saudi as the only pacer. And then finally, Ajaz Patel. Yeah, so again, here is the base assumption that the wicket will assist spinners and it should start to do a lot more. Even from the first day, like is what like it was in the test between England and Pakistan, which is why. You've, you've seen so many spinners. If Zaid doesn't play and you feel that I want to take the extra batter option from uh, Pakistan, you can go with Agha Salman. He'll bat in the lower middle order. You could go with one of the openers or the other or only that person plays in Mohamed Nawaz. So there are enough options for you to try. Again, I'll go back to the risk level being high for this very reason. That is not the case at times with New Zealand. You kind of know the kind of setup that they will have. So... Uh, I think Team Saudi and Ajaz Patel should definitely get a good enough time, uh, and which is why they both are probably going to be in the team no matter what happens. So I think that's why the setup is what it is. And yeah, the captain, vice captain are again based on the assumption that they'll get to do enough with the bat, uh, with the ball, not with the bat. Yes, totally. And uh, while you have a lot of safe choices to go for with captaincy and vice captaincy, mm -hmm. we have gone with slightly riskier picks. Now, when you look at the pitch, day three onwards, it might not seem uh, risky in that terms, but just in terms of how other players would probably look at the fantasy mm -hmm. game by trying to bank on a batter in a test match, which is absolutely fair because yeah. they are able to give you more points while there are lesser points for a wicket for... Uh, in test matches for bowlers, but we still feel that both of them in Abrar and Ajaz will be able to extract the best value out of this pitch and give you that consistency in terms of opportunity across and that lack. Like we always say with the bowlers, they get multiple opportunities, which is only more in test matches and hence we have opted for both of them. Yeah, and again, just a caveat here, if you feel it will be flat, you can pack yeah. with six batters. There is nobody who's stopping you from doing that. Uh, just because we pick more bowlers doesn't mean you need to also pick. If you feel that, no, I feel Imam Masood, uh, Tom Latham and or Daryl Mitchell, they'll all come good if it's a flat deck. Please go ahead and use those combinations as well. Phantom Play will allow you to take six batters, so you can do that. And then you can have a combination where a Babar, Kane or a Tom Latham, Shan Masood is kind of your captain as captain. So feel free, but always back your visualization because that is what sets you apart from everybody else. Yes, absolutely. So that is what rounds up our base team for this game. And now let's look at the best Grand League options that we have here. So this is the section that uh, brings out the best smile from Nikhil Bhai across <laughs> videos and across uh, sections. So Nikhil Bhai, what are your two Grand League picks for this one? Oh, first is a proper Grand League pick, uh, but I feel he'll he can come good, and that is Tim Saudi. Uh, he's someone who's had good amount of success versus Pakistan. And he can also come in and hit a handy if you run slow down the order. And he can hit a, hit, hits a lot of boundaries. So, uh, again, I'm not clutching at straws, but because he's the captain, I'm not expecting him to bowl a lot. But whenever he does, because he can also get the ball to do a bit, I think he could be a very handy option for you to try out in Grand Leagues. So he's part of the base team, but I feel he could be a very handy captain as captain option in Grand League. So that is the New Zealand bit covered. We've already talked about backing the batters in that regard. So coming to the Pakistan side, again, it is very, very tricky to pick one guy just that will come good. I think Babar and uh, Shah Masood and Imam might take the kick there. But Abdullah Shafiq is somebody I'm, I'm, I know Viren is going to pick. San. Keeping him aside for that, if Hassan Ali plays, you can take a punt on it. Is, uh, and these two picks are entirely Grand League. They may not work. They may give, hopefully, they don't give negative points. But uh, if they work, they are somebody who can give you a lot because they are that kind of personality. So Hassan Ali will give you both runs with that and contribute with the ball. And same is the case with Tim South. Tim South is still more safe. Hassan Ali is slightly more, more risky because you've already gone with spinners. I think 
just trying to give you a differential option that you can go with the pacer. If Nasim Shah plays, whichever pacer you feel will do well for Pakistan. Yes, very interesting calls and mm-hmm. in test matches, especially you should not miss out on his GL calls. You have to try all of them in rotation. <laughs> And uh, my Grand League picks, so whoever bats first, either Will Young or Abdullah Shafiq, one of those two. So whoever of the two is going to be batting first, ensure that you try them. And the second pick is Neil Wagner. I think he's an absolute workhorse. And in Pakistan, reverse swing is something that can come into play. So he is a good exponent of that. So hence, he is my second choice. So, yes, one based on the toss and the other is mm. already based on the conditions who you can take in either scenario, whether they bowl first or bowl second. Yes, I think uh, first match of the series are always great to play multiple combinations. So, again, which is where the risk is high, but we're still recommending small league if you want. But go with a very confident uh, visualization and then pick your captain, vice captain and trying to pick guys who are in the game a lot more. Yes, so that is about it for this preview. Thank you so much to everyone who tuned in. Yep. We hope that you enjoy both the Boxing Day Test matches. The other preview yep. is already up of Australia with South Africa. If you haven't seen it yet, ensure you do that. All the good luck to you and have a great one. Yeah, have a good game, guys. Happy winnings. <laughs>